soul within my heart Won't let the darkness beat me down Stay in the night, my hope alive for you I'll walk in the fire and not be burned Pray in the fire to watch it turn Jesus, tonight I give it all to you I won't let the storm weather my heart Oh, yes, you are good. 
because of that you are good and your promises are good so Lord I just pray that tonight that we would know that that we would believe it even when the times are tough and God that we would be able to speak that truth out to our friends to our family to our parents just to people that need it the most so Lord I just pray that you would instill that in us it's in your name we pray amen Thank you. You guys can have a seat. Thank God we didn't have a mess. Who's going to clean the papers up? Not me. Oh, no? No. Randy did it last year. Well, he can do it again. Hmm. Yeah, this wine's not bad. It's not good either, but he wants it. No, you don't. Oh. Did you have a nice Christmas? Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, did you get everything you wanted? Almost. Almost, huh? Well, that's, that's, that's life. Well, there's always next Christmas. Yep. Hey, that's funny. What's that over there behind the desk? Where? Oh, behind the desk, against the wall over there. Why don't you go check it out? Hmm. Santa Claus Oh, I still say those things are dangerous. Shut up. Put on your galoshes and your coat. It's cold out. I, I had one when I was eight years old. What if he hurts himself? Hey. Daddy, your coat! Don't shoot any animals or birds. Except the bumpers and dogs. Oh, Be careful, Ralphie. Now, it is well known throughout the Midwest that the old man is a turkey junkie. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's oh, a good movie. Um, <clears throat> so we're just coming back right from Thanksgiving. And every year we go and we hang out with um, my sister in Nashville. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's a long drive. But before we go, every year, I kind of get in this argument with my wife, Molly. You guys might know her. Um, she loves Christmas. She loves everything about Christmas. 
I love Christmas and everything about Christmas. It's pretty incredible. Except I do not want to decorate before Thanksgiving. Like, I don't. I don't want to put up any lights. I don't want to pull out the tree. I don't want to do any of that stuff just because I, we're leaving. There's no point. Like, we'll be, we will do it the day we get back. Like, I, we don't want to deal with it. And I know a lot of you guys probably hear your parents have the same argument. Like, when are we going to set up? When are we going to get ready? When are we going to decorate? And the, really, the two things I don't like are decorating too early before Thanksgiving and Christmas music. I don't like Christmas music. But besides that, I love everything there is about Christmas. How many of you guys, Christmas is your favorite holiday of the year? Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right, hands down, hands down. When I was, it, it's, it's always been my favorite holiday. It still is today. But when I was your age, Christmas was my favorite holiday because I loved getting gifts. Like, I, I loved getting gifts. And if I, if I pause and I look back in my mind, my parents were pretty awesome at giving me some pretty cool gifts. Um, and they probably spoiled me too much to the point when even when I probably was too old, I expected certain things on Christmas. And I'd get upset if I didn't get them. Um, I remember one year, I think I was in like sixth grade, um, one of my friends whose house I always hung out, he had a drum set, and it was awesome. And every time I went over there, I wanted to play the drums. And I could do like two or three beats on it, and I was like, man, I know how to drum. I'm cool. Like, I need a drum set. So I asked my parents, and they bought me a drum set. Like, and I, I didn't have training or lessons or anything. I didn't take any. They just bought me a drum set because that is what I wanted. There's something awesome about getting the gifts that we want. It's pretty cool. But see, Christmas is still my favorite holiday, but not because of the gifts I get anymore, but because of the gifts I'm able to give. When you get a certain age, and especially when you have kids, it, all, it becomes all about giving your kids an awesome gift. Last year, does anyone know or remember what one of the hardest kids' gifts to find was? Hatchimals. Yes, Hatchimals. So I, I have two daughters. Uh, I have three daughters, but two are at the age where they, they wanted gifts, and they both wanted Hatchimals. They thought they were cool. Uh, we kind of saw the, the ads and um, how they worked, and it was kind of weird and crazy and a little bit stupid all at the same time. <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, and I didn't, I didn't connect with it. Like, I'm like, okay, it's, it's a stuffed animal. Sweet. It's a Furby. It's the same thing, right? But to them, it was different, and it was exciting, and it was awesome. And here's what happened. I remember as soon as I heard about it, we were at the store, and I started looking for them. And I was in Target, and I couldn't find them. And I was in Walmart, and I couldn't find them. I tried to order them on Amazon, and I couldn't find them. And then I tried on Walmart, and they were like $500. So I couldn't find them, I said, because um, I wasn't spending $500 on a Hatchimal. Um, <clears throat> so I remember that season last year going from store to store to store just randomly because I knew the only chance you have at getting them is when they happen to be in stock and you happen to walk in the store and they're putting them on the shelves. So like weeks went by and weeks went by and to the point where I think eventually the girls forgot about them. <laughs> they forgot about the Hatchimals. They didn't even necessarily want them anymore. They just saw it on a commercial. They saw it somewhere. They wanted it. But I had it in my head that I was going to give my girls what they really wanted and I was going to find that gift because I wanted to give them the best gift I could. And I remember one day I went over to Target and they were like the person was putting them on the shelves as I was there and like there was like 20 people trying to grab them and I got two for my girls and there was a, a two Hatchimal limit <laughs> and so my I texted my mom and she's like yeah grab some for your cousins and I'm like I'll try but they're not going to let me so like I was there I put them back and I drove home so my wife could come back and buy them. And it was like this big ordeal this, just to give kids gifts. And that, that's what I love. It changed. I loved getting gifts, but then it changed to giving gifts. And that's okay. Like that, if Christmas is, is like that and we like getting gifts and we like giving gifts, um, those things are okay. But have you ever been able to give 
someone something like that. Like that they, they really wanted it. That they really needed. That they, they had to have. Have you ever been able to give someone something like that? Think about it. Like uh, when we do that, there's this feeling in us. We get this feeling and we feel excited and special and it's awesome. And I don't think that's a mistake. Have you ever stopped and thought why we're like that? Like why we're like that? Why do we enjoy giving someone a gift and making them happy? Making them smile? Like why do, why do some of us spend some of our time Weekends like serving others, doing Meals on Wheels, volunteering. Why do we do that? Why do we raise money to go on missions trips, right? Some of us, we raise a bunch of money and people donate so that then we can go and we can serve someone else. Um, Why do we sometimes feel like we want to just go make a difference, make an impact? Maybe why is it that at Christmas every year, we feel like we need to go to Target or go to Walmart or go to the mall and find that perfect gift for someone special every single year when in the reality maybe sometimes they forgot it. Maybe sometimes they don't even know you're buying them a gift in that moment. Ever thought about that? Like stop for a second and think. Like we are the one thing, like humans, you and me, are the one thing that God created that like have a desire and like to go out of our way to make other people happy. Like you don't, you don't walk down the street and see cats going out of their way to make another cat feel happy, right? Like cats are selfish and they're jerks. We know that. Poop, poop nugget is a jerk, just so you know. Um, that's, that's, listen, shh, shh. That's the way cats are, right? So, so have you ever stopped and thought, why is it that we love giving gifts and making someone else smile? And I think it's this one thing, and I think it's a huge thing, and it's because we are made in the image of God. That we hold something that God has given us, and it's something special. We are made in the image of God. And because he loves us and cares enough, and and the reality is what we're going to talk about in a minute, that he has given us this amazing gift because he loves us. He loves us so much, he's given us a gift that we hold a part of that in our hearts. So that when we give something to someone, we're reflecting who God is. And there's an incredible, incredible picture there. Um, And and I just want to kind of add a little context context to that. A few days ago, we were... In the car, it was actually more like a month ago. We are in the car, and we were leaving, of course, probably Target, and it was just me and Brinley, and we were hanging out, and I had found cash in my car. And you know that's a rarity today, because we don't use cash, right? Like, I, I never have cash on me. So, um, and she was driving me nuts in Target, so I did what all good parents do, is I bribed her, right? Like, that's what good parents do. So I said, hey, I got $5 in cash. We'll go get ice cream if you just relax. <laughs> like, just Let's get through this trip to Target. Let's relax, okay? So she, I had, she knew we had $5, and we were going to go get some ice cream before we went home, and we were leaving Target, and right there on the corner was a homeless man. And he was asking for money. And I, right there I had this dilemma because I had cash on me for once, and I'm like, I can help this guy who needs help. I don't know his story. I don't know what's going on, but I could help him. But I just told my daughter we're going to go get ice cream with his money. So I said, hey, Brinley, she's six. I said, hey, how would you feel about giving this cash to this guy instead of us giving, I, getting ice cream? She's like, why? And I'm like, well, let me tell you, this, this guy, he's out here standing on the road asking for money. Maybe he has to. Maybe he's got a family. Maybe he can't find work. Maybe they lost their house in the hurricane. Can we give this $5 to this guy instead of us getting ice cream? And she said, yeah, Dad, let's do that. And there was something so cool about letting her see that, about her participating in that and seeing she was taking part of what God 
does in us and through us and with us by us stopping and giving this simple $5 gift to this homeless man, we were actually showing the image of God to him. Today I want to talk about this, and you might be saying, well, what does this have to do with Christmas? Well, it's obviously about giving, but I think at the core of Christmas, we're going to read these two passages, and they go to the very meaning of what Christmas is all about. And it's, these were written, this first one was written by a guy, a guy named Paul, who we talk about quite a bit here. It's in Galatians, uh, the verses 4 through 6, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Um, but in Galatians 3 and 4, Paul is talking to some people, and he's pretty much explaining that before Jesus, that we were pretty messed up. Like, we, we had some problems, we had some, some things going on in our lives, and we were a far apart from God. And then in verse 4, Paul throws this in. He says this. But when, we set, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. That's a pretty cool verse. I'm going to read it one more time. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship because you are his sons. God sent his spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. And I love how it starts. It says, at exactly the right time telling us that God knows when we need him. He knows what we need. There are two important things that happen in this verse. It says that, um, that Christ, we are both redeemed from the law and received as sons. These are two important things to understand when we talk about this amazing gift that God has given us. You see, Paul was saying about how we were far from God before Jesus came. But then Jesus came and fixed that so we could have a fixed relationship with Jesus, with God. That we could know our Father intimately, that he could know us and we could have a fixed relationship. And that is an incredible gift. And here's how I want to explain it to you. Let's say that you are an orphan, which means you don't have a mom or a dad, okay? And it's a hard life and you grow up and you go out and you start doing everything you can to just succeed, to do well in life. But then you start making some bad choices. You end up stealing money when you need it, doing what you need to get ahead, and eventually you get into some major trouble. Someone sues you. You owe all this debt. You make bad choices. You end up in prison. One random day, this guy walks in and says, hey, like, all the mistakes you made, I've taken care of that. All that debt you've owed, it's been paid. It's awesome. Like, you don't owe anything. I talked to the guards. They're going to let you free in about an hour. You don't know this guy, but that's a pretty cool thing. And that is awesome. So, so you get ready. You put on your, your clothes. They give you the stuff that they took away from you when you are going to prison. They give it back to you. You're getting ready to go. And you go step out that doors. And you're no longer a prisoner. You no longer have this debt. You are free. And that is awesome. See, the reality is that's what Jesus did for us. He paid our debt, but that is not the end of the story. You see, because what happens in this story is that same guy who just paid your debt pulls up in a limo. He unlocks the door. He says, hey, hop in. You're not going to not hop in, right? (laughs) He just paid your debt. So you hop in, and he says, hey, just so you know, I found out you didn't have a mom or a dad. And I just adopted you to be my daughter. I just adopted you to be my son. And so no longer are you, you're not just only free. Your debt has been paid. You didn't just get out of prison. Now, okay, go make your own life. But you are actually given life because of me, because I have adopted you. You see, the reality is the gospel is so much bigger than so often we paint it or we picture it in our own heads, is we think, yes, Thank you, God, for paying my debt, but we miss the fact that we now live as his sons and daughters. Listen, God has given you 
everything. That no matter your name, you now carry, if you've said yes to Jesus, you now carry his name. You are adopted as his son and daughter. And he has given you the greatest gift that you could ever receive. And that is awesome. But here's where it ties in to what we watched earlier. You see, because Jesus, God, also said this. This is Luke 11, 11 through 13. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? Guys, when you see these passages work together, it is a beautiful thing. See, because this story in a, in a Christmas story, I want you to put up a picture real quick of uh, Ralphie's dad. I think we got one. Yeah. And I know it's, it's blurry. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's HD, 4K, yeah. Um, it's kind of blurry. I get it. But if you've watched this movie, you understand that he is a jerk. That he is mean. That he is grumpy. That he's a dad that you wouldn't really want to have. He treats his son not great. He treats his wife not great. And the incredible thing about that clip that we just watched was we saw a terrible dad get so excited about giving his son the gift that he wanted. You see, in light of this passage, we have to understand that our God loves us perfectly. He loves us so much more than Ralphie's dad could ever love his own son. But look at the smile this terrible dad had when he gave his son the gift he wanted. Listen, I want to tell you guys that God, that Jesus, he wants to give you, his sons and daughters, incredible gifts. He loves to treat you well. He loves to give you what you ask for. He doesn't always do it. No. But he loves it when his sons and daughters understand the gift that was paid for us so we can have a relationship with Jesus and that when we go to God, we understand that he is a God that loves to give us things. And so I remember growing up and every year, whatever gift it, what it was I wanted, whether it was a Power Rangers toy, which I remember, I remember I was probably like four or five, and every night before bed I would pray, and I, I would pray, I prayed weird. Did any of you pray weird as kids? I did, I prayed weird. So I'd pray, I'd pray every night, I'd pray for my mom, my dad, my sister, and the boy. Do you know who the boy was? It was me, I'm such an idiot. Like, I called myself the boy when I was praying to God, wow. Um, so, so God, I pray, thank you for mom, thank you for dad, thank you for Taryn, and thank you for the boy. <laughs> okay, I'm sure God's like, what is he doing? Um, and I remember saying, I remember saying, God, I just want that Power Ranger toy. Hold up. And I remember getting older and thinking about, man, I was dumb. Man, God hated that. And let me just be, be honest. I think God loves it when we ask him for things. I think God loves it to be able to step into our life and bless us. Doesn't mean he promises to give us everything we want. Doesn't mean you're not going to have to worry about anything or things aren't going to be hard. Or sometimes you won't get what you really desire. But I guarantee you when our perfect father in heaven sees an opportunity to give us a gift that would make us excited, happy, joyful, that he wants to do that. And in return, we should understand the one that's giving it. We should understand the smile on his face. Because he didn't just pay our debt. He adopted us as his sons and daughters. 
He's given us so much more than we truly deserve. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much. God, for Christmas. God, for what it represents. God, we thank you for... um, God, the ability to give gifts, to bring joy to people. God, and how it's not just this random act, but it's actually a picture, God, of why you came to begin with, because you loved us and you offered us an incredible gift. God, you've given us the ability to bless people. So God, I pray that as we enter this holiday season, God, that we wouldn't be just consumed with all the stuff and things, God, but we could think about you as the perfect gift giver. The God that smiles when he looks at us and wants what's best for us. God, we love you in your name. Amen. Or maybe not. Hello, friends. Can you stay where you are? Please stop moving around the room. Everyone freeze. Okay. So, as you've noticed, we're in Studio 3 again, and that means you need to know where your small groups are. So, if you are a 7th or 8th grader, your small group is where it was before the storm came. There's going to be a nice list up here that will remind you in case you forgot. Now, if you are one of my 6th grade friends, I need you to know that you guys all meet in grow zone rooms. And so what you're gonna do, everyone freeze. You're going to exit this door over here where Taylor is, wave your hands like crazy. That was so unenthusiastic. Um, And you'll go down the grow zone hallway. Girls, you keep going to the end of the hallway. Guys, you're up here at the front. Notice the number on the screen because that's your small group. You guys got it? Okay, break.